Hello everyone and welcome to the 100 and I'm waiting for Google Docs to load 56th. in. 56th. 56th episode of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast recorded on September 12th, 2021. On the podcast today, we have a man who has been 26 for 72 hours, Andrew Clark. How's it feel? Feels drunk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, guys. Lucas, you you know what I'm talking about. Ryan, you will at some point in the future. Our bodies disintegrate at rates faster than we expect. It is all downhill from here. I'm an old man. I'm an old... I know the saying was, like, never trust anyone over 30, but I'm going to be honest, the hippies shouldn't trust me either. Oh. I'm not quite 30, but I wouldn't trust me. (laughs) I I definitely know what you mean. My body is breaking down. I was struggling with borderline heat exhaustion towards the end of running 16 miles yesterday while I'm prepping for my marathon. Okay. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah, man, when I'm, like hang cleaning like 350 sometimes i feel what you might call fatigue and you know just we all face these challenges meanwhile my knees pop like firecrackers when i stand up have you tried stretching i did try that today for the first time oh yeah ever wait no yeah, I've ever what period? no okay come on guys sarcasm's real <laughs> I'm not actually dying. (laughs) Don't know but me. Give me the yes and. Andrew believes in starting a race tight back in high school. You want those muscles I did did, did have unbelievably tight hamstrings back in high school. And I I stretched a lot. I used those roller things. Not like the foam rollers. Like the... I mean, I use those too. But like the actual like rolling pin looking things yeah on my legs to try to get them to loosen up and i remember the athletic trainer saying like something's wrong here <laughs> these should not be as tight as they are i can't stretching isn't yeah sorry stretching isn't based on science by the way just so you know <laughs> stretching is literally just a verbal tradition passed down through the centuries by coaches like yeah. it literally it does not have scientifically proven benefits to prevent injuries. No, it, it's stretching is one of those things where like they've proven you shouldn't like it doesn't help you to do it until after whatever sort yeah, of extreme exactly. athletic it's event you've done. That it's worthwhile. Beforehand, you're supposed to warm up. Uh, like you're supposed. I mean, to... it's just don't go extreme. Don't just start dead sprinting from a sitting position. Yeah. Like yeah. Well yeah. No, I mean it's not like... necessarily like. You yeah. got to get, like, your muscles loose and, like, warmed up and, like, prepared. Yeah, and, like, I, I remember when I was in this, uh, like, health and fitness, uh, like, the science of health and fitness class in college. They, like, talked about how in the Olympics, the Russians would always beat the shit out of the Americans in track and field well, events. Because of steroids. Well, yeah, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> we all know now that's what was going on. But, like, the anecdote was the coaches were, like, watching the, the Russians like jog around and then while the americans just like touched their toes and then like went straight into the sprint and fucking lost and like man what's happening here this doesn't make any sense yeah the steroids were part of it you can't tell me the americans weren't also doing steroids though come on let's be let's be honest here the russians were really bad and still Mm. are Americans take steroids. We know this. A lot of Americans take steroids that aren't Olympic athletes. That have There's, no fucking reason to. No, uh, wow, the stakes mm. seem pretty high. Be super jacked and cool and everyone loves you. <laughs> yeah, nah, there's no reason, man. It's just, it's just whatever. Nah, man, I, look, of course we know that American athletes take steroids, but we Definitely, there's been zero evidence of basically any other country having it be a state-sponsored intelligence program that's, like, designed (laughs) to spread propaganda amongst its own populace. Like, there's not been any evidence of that for 
anyone else. Like, that is an exclusively Russian thing. Hence why the a lot of Russian athletes still compete. They just don't get to compete for Russia. <laughs> I think the closest we got was, like, the opposite. I saw, I was reminded of this the other day of a NFL prospect who after 9-11, joined the army instead, and then the Bush administration kind of propped him up yeah. as Pat a hero. Yeah. yeah, even though he was very... And then he got fragged. Right. He was killed by friendly fire. He was also yeah. very critical of, like, the invasion of Iraq, the Bush administration, but he swept those parts under the rug. Yeah. Also on the podcast today, we have midnight hiker extraordinaire Ryan Holtz. He, I asked an information booth guy, what do we do? It's dark out, and we parked a mile away, and he was like, you can walk down the road, uh, in which there will be cars driving at probably inordinate amounts of speed, and you'll be in a, in a pretty risky position, or you can hike, and there'll be probably like some rattlesnakes and scorpions and mm-hmm. shit. So, I don't know, your choice, man. <laughs> and we went down the trail. And it was pretty lit. Mm. Not too bad. Pulled I mean, it flashlight. sounds like it was literally not it. lit. Hey. It was. It was completely black. Uh, learned that the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus has a much better uh, flashlight than the mm. iPhone 8 or whatever. I don't know which phone Angel has. Ah. Uh, like, m- no, like, twice... Illuminating twice the area, <laughs> like it's not even funny how much better the uh, the flashlight is. But yeah, it was pretty fun at the end of the day. There wasn't really any oh. any problems other than the fact that we're walking in the pitch black. But yeah, it's good to hear. It's very good to hear. To me, Lucas DeRider, a man who ordered one of those, like has a band so you can like it, it it sticks into your hand and the bottle is curved to fit the shape of your palm water bottles uh to avoid the aforementioned heat stroke uh that i brought up at the top of the podcast when i'm running yeah when i was training lucas as his mick to his rocky mm-hmm. um i did <laughs> I was a little bit surprised that he was like, no, I just down a bunch of water beforehand and like, good to go. And I was like, can't do that anymore. Oh. I was like, I mean, look, you're the runner. Like, I don't fucking know how this shit works. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like there's been an adjustment. 16 miles is too much to run without any amount of hydration. It turns out. Especially when it's 90 degrees out or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to hydrate beforehand. Uh huh. It, it's, it's a constant state of being. Well, like, no, I usually drink like 32 ounces of water within like 15 minutes before I start a run. No, but but again, yeah, that doesn't make you hydrated. Your body can only absorb so much water at once, and the rest of it you just piss out. <laughs> like, you have to drink water throughout the whole day in order to stay hydrated. Well, but what if I'm running in the morning? Like, what? right after then I wake drink, up? Then drink water before you go to bed and then, and then drink more water when you wake up. And also, you probably shouldn't go running right away in the morning before you, like, have chance to get hydrated. So I'm supposed to carve out a block of my day in the afternoon, the hottest part of the day, and that's somehow safer? That doesn't sound right to me. Okay. <laughs> Continue. I, I have no dog in this fight, man. Y'all, y'all the runners. Running is fucking torture. I'm not a understand. runner anymore. Let's be very wow. clear about this. Ah, I, I got out of that game. I, I'm retired. It's not who yeah. I am anymore. I haven't. One last job, Andrew. I haven't stretched. The big one. I haven't stretched since the last high school track meet. I can't do it. All oh, right. I fucking no, man. Y'all, y'all are insane. Y'all make no sense. All y'all runners. 
Yeah, so if listeners at home, if you can tell from our energy already, not a lot of bullet points on this one, so it's going to be weird. Let's see where we go with it. As this we, is like every Harmon town ever when Dan Harmon realizes about five minutes in that he has no material and he's just <laughs> like, this is it, <laughs> by the way. This is the show. We don't have any guests. I'm fresh out of material. Like, all right, let's just move on. See what happens. And we're moving into... News of the week. Suda51, the creator of the No More Heroes games, says it's cool to buy knockoff No More Heroes merch. I think I'm going to buy some knockoff No More Heroes merch now. Do it. Yeah, yeah please. You have, you, have, you have been officially uh, sanctioned. You're like a privateer. I think they were like, you do it in my name. <laughs> you buy stolen IP for me, the guy who it got stolen from. I think what's happening here is, yeah, pretty similar to that, where he only owns, his company only owns like 10% of those games. And the rest of it is divided, am- divided up amongst various publishers and partners. So there's just no merchandise, no official merchandise for this. So, yeah. Oh. Go on Redbubble. That's different. If there's literally no official merchandise, then that's definitely like yeah. 100% different. Yeah. Right. It's that's, not like, that's, wow. That's, you'd be an asshole to not let people, but like, right? you shouldn't be buying knockoff merch. I don't have an alternative for you yeah. to show your appreciation of and support of this IP. Yeah. I mean, the the whole, the, the argument that you would have is like, no, you shouldn't buy knockoff merch. Mm-hmm. We have people that worked really hard to make licensed merch and you're shitting on their hard work except that hard work doesn't exist right it's kind of like the opposite of nintendo and emulation where hey don't emulate our games but if you want to play them meh (laughs) go fuck yourself i guess yeah (laughs) pay pay five hundred dollars for a vacuum sealed copy of a cartridge that was manufactured 35 years ago and may or may not work (laughs) Oh my god, I forgot some of those Game Boy Color games have internal batteries that fry. They literally might uh-huh. not work. Uh-huh. <laughs> It'll just be forever day. Uh. I had that with Pokemon Gold. That was my first ever Pokemon game. And yeah, of course it was emulated. And yeah, no, just... I It was always day. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, this Pokemon can only be found at night. And I was like... Oh. Uh, <laughs> this game doesn't realize that... It's being emulated. It thinks it's a real boy. <laughs> it, it's the time isn't changing because the battery is what controls the time. Oh no! I guess I'm never catching a hoot hoot. Yeah, I never saw them. No. It is also kind of weird that the game, the Nintendo GameCube controller, remains to be like one of the most used controllers for like current Nintendo games. Mm-hmm. But it's really hard to like get. GameCube games. Yeah. And like, yeah, because like you can't play that shit on any of these new consoles mm-hmm. and you can't emulate You play them on shit. the Wii. No, yeah, exactly. Which it came out totally like 15 still relevant years Nintendo. ago. <laughs> Look, I booted up my Nintendo Wii a week ago. <laughs> like, yeah. Totally still relevant. I remember it works. I got the Nintendo Wii. Like, two or three years after it came out, and that's when I started playing GameCube games. I, my favorite thing ever was to go to the GameStop, find, like, the used GameCube games section, mm-hmm. and buy, like, five games for, like, 15 bucks. Yep. And be like, I'm gonna play this on my Nintendo Wii, on a Nintendo GameCube controller. <laughs> and that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And it was. That's the modern equivalent of... I'm going to buy this, or I'm just going to, you know, borrow this PS4 game from my friend. Mm. <laughs> he'll he'll send it with my other friend that's moving halfway across the country, and then <laughs> I'll, I'll play it on my PS5 <laughs> with a, a PS5 controller, admittedly. Huh. And then one day I'll fly back to Wisconsin and hand it back to him. <laughs> oh, have you guys stressed, uh, have you guys tested this? Can you sync up a PlayStation 4 controller to a PlayStation 5? No. Oh. Mm. I think you can, yeah. 
I... Overcooked was talking about it. Oh, oh, cool. You miss out on a fuck ton of features, and it only works with PS4 games. But oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. You can use it to play a PS4 game on your PS5, right. but if you have a PS5 game, even if you wanted to just not use those features, it won't work. It just won't. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of PlayStation. A Sony PlayStation 5 showcase happened. I don't think I'm going to buy any of these games. Hey, GTA 5 is supposedly delayed for six months or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's delayed <laughs> until <laughs> March, but it it's also supposedly free only... for six months and then it'll be a subscription. No, it's only three months now. It was going to oh, be six months and now they're like, yeah, three months. I mean, it's delayed. It was technically six months from now. Yeah. Starting in January. Will you be able to download it in January? No. Um So Spider-Man. It's fun. Ooh, Venom. He's, yeah, he's going to be there. He's going to be hot, I guess. Is that what people want Venom to be? How how is he hot? Wait, what? No one talked about how hot Venom was. Andrew they just showed his. They just showed Venom's face, with his Venom teeth. Oh, you you are not aware of the Venom fan community. Okay, good for you, my sweet summer child. You live in a different universe, Lucas. That's what I said. Yeah. I I, I, I brought back up the Bowsette meme for the millionth time. <laughs> like, I just don't think you and I live in the same world. Mm-hmm. Um. People are excited about God of War Ragnarok. I, may, it, it's the exact same game. Look how he pushes the boat in the water the same way. Yeah. I don't fucking get it, man. I Also, some people are upset that Thor Is looks fat. like an yeah. actual, like, yeah. now in his 30s frat bro. Like, guys, come on. Thor, Thor looks like the fucking mountain from yeah. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Thor looks like what fucking Thor yeah, looked like right? to ancient Nordic peoples. Like, stop pretending that Thor is going to have a fucking eight pack and like yeah. chiseled body from modern training regimen. Like, no, no it's just Thor would look like a Marvel. big fucking warrior, dude. Right. Like, yeah, they they picture Marvel Thor because that's all anyone consumes anymore. So yeah. that Thor is fat too. <laughs> like that's. Can't. But it's a joke. Mm. True. That, it, yeah. That's a j- they a literally joke. exclusively over, yeah. play that for um, jokes. They never once mm-hmm. make that a positive that he's fat. <laughs> like, I. Although this. Okay. So I I always no go ahead. Sorry, I'm I'm a little behind. I'm gonna exit out. Oh, and hop back no worries. In. Um, all of this made me realize that uh, Thor is kind of Thor is a guy. Thor is the kind of guy who you always see him drinking pre-workout, but he only hits the gym like maybe twice a week. He's nah. bulking. Yeah. He's, he's not going to hit the gym once again. Like this is, this is going to be a person that is just remarkably large in size and mm-hmm. stature. But he's not going to have, like, defined muscles because he probably eats as much as yeah. he fights. Mm-hmm. Like, he's going to be huge. A lot of his strength comes from having to haul around that massive frame. Yeah. And just the constant, like, even if he can't lift percentages of his body weight in the same way that, like, a bodybuilder might be able to... He's still going to be able to lift more than you because his body's so fucking huge. And, like, my favorite thing is this weird obsession in, like, modern, like, fight movies and video games and shit of, like, the the small, quick warriors. Like, oh, the he outmaneuvers these guys and he stabs them and it's the Brad Pitt from Troy versus the actual uh, Achilles mm-hmm. In the Odyssey, who was just a like a seven foot tall giant dude, who did not like dance around the battlefield. He just cleaved people in half. Yeah, 
whose whole thing was that, like, I am the only one strong enough to lift this spear. Yeah. None of you people can even lift this motherfucker. I'm huge. I played Hades. I knew, I know Achilles fucking ripped, fucking on shit. Yeah. He's on shit. <laughs> Hades absolutely Next juicy. level, bro. Yeah, no. Right. Yeah, no, Thor, Thor, Thor's got mm. gear. <laughs> um, God, what else was in the show, kids? I'm remembering offhandedly. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, that game a bunch of people were hyped about. Looks like you're just first person doing karate chops in the air to make magic happen. Eh. Uh. People were excited about Death Loop when, and then it got delayed. Is that still? Is there still hype? It come doesn't it come out in like three days. I think so, but I see people talking about it a lot. I think people are still hyped. There you go. Um, oh, God, what's that one game? Uh, oh, yeah, new game, Project Eve. Looks like bad near Automata. I mean, like... I feel like every game is bad near Automata. <laughs> yeah. You play any game, and you're like, uh... This this is this could have just been I near mean, Automata. Like, I don't know why you made. Why did you make Madden Twenty Two? It could have just been near Automata. Guy who's only played near Automata getting a lot of near Automata vibes from this <laughs> game. <laughs> uh, no, it's like I think I heard a comment about how they were inspired by that game for this game, but like even from the even from the trailer, it's already undercutting one of the things that made near Automata so good. Which, the plot of that game is that aliens invade the planet, and now these cyborgs have to, these robots have to deal with them. But this is happening so far in the future that these aliens are dead in Dear Automata. So both sides of this war are like nothing. We're, we're, we're fighting for nobody right now. Whereas in this game, in Project Eve, it's, oh, spooky aliens. They're real. <laughs> nah. Not for me. I'm sorry I'm being cynical. You guys pumped for anything in this? Nah. Nah. I should probably finally play Uncharted Lost Legacy. Oh yeah. Because that was like Uncharted was like my favorite video game franchise of all time for a while. And then they wrapped up the story. I'm like, okay, good wash my hands of this like it was a good ending and they're like wait what if there was a little bit more and i was like i don't want there to be a little bit more how about a little lesbian adventure as a treat yeah nah. Die. bring on battlefield honestly yeah 2042 baby I mean, I am still, like, constantly in a state of living a couple years in the past. I, I just finished Metro Exodus and just started playing uh, Ghosts of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, man, like, I'm excited for Deathloop. I think that's going to be fun. Maybe I'll pick up Uncharted 6. But I know <laughs> I won't because I'm not going to finish Ghosts of Tsushima for three months. And at that point, all those games will have come out and I'll just constantly be in a state of trying to backtrack. And I'll be playing Battlefield 2042 four nights a week with you guys. <laughs> no one has time anymore, man. Hey. You're adults. You can't fucking get home from school, neglect all your homework, and play video games for eight hours. <laughs> yeah. I need to cook for myself and clean my apartment for myself and work out for myself instead of just going to sports. Yeah. We work until 6 p.m. Yeah. It fucking sucks. You could do. Se Being 26 sucks. <laughs> oh, wow. You could do 7 to 3 like me. That gives me some free time in the afternoon. I'm tired all the time, but like. Oh, okay. I can't. I can't do that. No one, no one would let that happen. Sure, it does sound nice. I mean, I, I've said it before that, like, for me, the minute that I work. That day's done. Like, even if I were to work, uh, what, seven, five and a half hour days, that mm -hmm. would suck. 
Like, you know, like I need the full day to actually get any recharge in. So for me, I'd go like fucking three uh, 13 hour days, man. That'd be fucking awesome. Like, I don't care that it's so long to work. Like, it, it'd be done. I, I could then have four days completely to myself. Like, that sounds awesome. Everyone's doing the, oh, four by 10. Like, I'm like, nah, man, bring on the three I, by 13. Hell, I do, I do two by 20. <laughs> 20 hours of work sleep for eight hours 20 more hours of work and then five fucking days to do whatever the hell i want i just imagine ryan as like a metalhead chucking red bull and mountain dew kickstarter while listening to edm and heavy metal for no fucking reason greasy as shit (laughs) in a hoodie at the office banging his head punching out code yeah that'd be fucking great man I'd do it. All right, so it sounds like Ryan never going to work in retail. Picking up doubles left and right in the hospitality industry, though. Salt of the earth, man. The ruling on the Apple v. Epic court case is in, and they both lose. It happened, everyone. Both Apple and Epic have lost. It's the right yeah. call. Yeah. Like, that's what we were saying from the very beginning. We were like, yeah, it seems like like Epic Games just actually broke their contract mm-hmm. and just did whatever the fuck they wanted and made a ton of money doing it, while Apple is really <laughs> shitty like mm-hmm. towards any and all like developers using the App Store. It sounds like both of them deserve to lose a lot of money, mm-hmm. and they did. <laughs> I love it. I honestly do yeah. love it. I hate our court systems. I really do. But goddamn, did they finally get something right? But it sounds like, yeah, like what I've always come uh, to the conclusion whenever we talk about like, oh, this celebrity has a gripe with this service because they believe that they got screwed over. And it's like, but they mm-hmm. signed a contract. Like, I just, I don't know how to get around the fact that they did sign this contract. So that's where I am. I'm like, you signed that contract, Epic Games. And then you just made millions of dollars directly, like, going against the contract that you signed. So it's hard to feel that much sympathy for you. But then, yeah, Apple sucks and is exploiting you. So great, Apple also gets (laughs) fucked over. Like, yay, everyone gets Um, fucked. Yeah, no, and that's kind of just how this court case resolved, to the best of my understanding where, yeah, the judge ruled that Epic's lawsuit wasn't uh, wasn't legitimate uh, and that, you know, as a part of that, which is normally the case with this stuff, they have to cover Apple's legal fees and, like, other money to deal with the hassle and time Apple had to put into defending themselves in this lawsuit. Uh, but then also ruled that, yeah, Apple not allowing people on their service to have other means of buying stuff except through the app store was shady as shit and they have to stop doing that hey look at that all right last but not least jake you know from state farm is in nba 2k 2022 may god have mercy on our souls (laughs) <laughs> kill me <laughs> I watched the video of the interaction yeah. that he has with the player and I hey I've been waiting for you to say that oh no <laughs> it's your catchphrase I love it so much <laughs> hey speaking of which you know since we're on the topic of good neighbors <laughs> check out State Farm <laughs> Oh, it hurts. <laughs> it's sad that they mm. recast him. Like, I I would be 10% more on board with this if it was the OG employee of State Farm who played the original Jake from State Farm. <laughs> I know they had to recast him because he was just going to be the face of the company, so it couldn't be Schlub. some dude who worked, in, worked for State Farm. <laughs> But, man, it's sad. Yeah. The the State Farm drip that you get to walk around in in the city 
It's so bad. So fucking nasty. It's some nasty ass drip, man. It's uh it's khakis. When they made that commercial, do you think that they thought five or six years from now this is going to be our entire marketing presence? No. I, I, can, I can't believe that. I mean, it's literally mm-hmm. everything. Like, it is all commercials just started as, like, an actual clever idea. And then they were replayed so many times that they lost any and all cultural cachet. And eventually they try to, like, really capitalize on it. They made a sitcom about the guy Co. Yeah. Cavemen. I do remember that. Like... Yeah. Yeah. It starts with just a genuine funny idea by a creative person, but is so just completely ridden into the ground by capitalism that by the end of it, it's just really sad and cringy. So, yeah. Who is the actor who plays Jake from State Farm, by the way? Uh, what is his name? He's... And who's Flo? Like, who, who plays Flo in progress? Who, like, all these characters that are literally like that's just who that actor is at this point they're just kevin miles plays jake from state farm now there there was a different jake from state farm and i don't mean the original one from the original commercial i mean oscar from the tried a different oscar from the office was jake from state Farm. i don't think he was jake from state farm i think he was just a state Uh, farm agent i think he was just playing a generic state farm agent okay he wasn't jake from state farm but yeah, he was in a lot of State Farm commercials, especially with like Chris Paul and stuff. Was the original Jake from State Farm commercial the one where the wife thinks her husband is cheating? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The late night mm-hmm. phone call. And he's like, you do that for me? No, oh, that sounds like a really good deal. <laughs> yeah. And that's why she asked, like, what are you wearing? Jake from State Farm. She expects like, oh, I'm not wearing anything. But and it's just yeah. a... Yeah. A schlub in the office. <laughs> wow. Shots fired at the OG Jake from State Farm. Fucking body shaming <laughs> this non actor who they asked, like, hey, dude, you're kind of charismatic. You want to be in this commercial? Didn't ask to be the center of their entire brand for years until they recasted him. <laughs> Just a dude who's like, yeah, I'll deliver a line. It should be fun. <laughs> All right, do we have anything happening in television, film, or other? Uh, khakis? Uh, I would say we're moving into the meme corner then, but I don't think we have any of those either. Um, Final Space got canceled. Oh shit, yeah! Ding dong, the witch yeah. is dead! Um, it's because of me, probably, right? Yeah, no, Lucas, you did that. They, they're they like, all right, we'll give you one last chance. Season three was a bit of a struggle, but we'll let you at least cap off the series and we'll take it from there. And then they read your article. They're like, you know what? Never mind. And did working. you ever follow up on, to see how that dude who flipped me off on Twitter after I posted that video? No, oh, okay. I should have. I, I, I don't remember what his name right. was. And I'd have to scroll mm. pretty far back in your Twitter feed. Yeah, it's to, not worth it. To find that tweet pretty far back yeah. in the tl you yeah. know um it's hard to take that many bangs i did at not once <laughs> god damn um i did not watch this week's episode of rick and morty yet or la- last week's i mean uh oh, that was gonna be my i know i know i wanted to get it i wanted point. to get it out now before you guys talk about it i was really looking forward to it because i heard some actual plot stuff happened but Jade and I said we were going to watch it together, and our schedules have not lined up the last couple mm-hmm. of days. So, yeah, I'm in the dark. I can <laughs> leave. I can leave, and you guys can talk about it, and I can. You can text me, and I can no, come back. Not... Right. That's the point. Do it next week. Yeah. I guess we're in the breakouts now. Um, I entered into a weird position where. I don't have any games I'm interested in playing for a solid month. I did see, though, that at the end of the year, beginning of next year, there are a lot of tactic-style games coming out that I'm really excited to play, have that itch for that style of gameplay again. So I decided, hey, Lucas, you never finished Fire Emblem Three Houses. 
What if you started a new playthrough of that when you got maybe two-thirds of the way through it after 60 hours the first time? Why? I did not realize that you never no. finished yeah, I, game. I assumed you finished I, it. Jesus. I lost it, man. I made the mistake of playing as a guy when the route I'm on has a lot of... Not even subtext, just queer text. And I thought, hmm, nope. Need to play as a woman to, to get the most out of this game. Just roll with it. Roll with the gay. Wait. What? Yeah, wait, hold no, on. No, like, okay, okay. In, so, like, the main... You don't want to be gay? A lot of the main female characters are bisexual or lesbians and are overthrowing a religious empire that's analogous to the Catholic Church. And it's like, hmm... This would be better if, like, the romance I was shooting for, like, leaned into the queer stuff. So, yeah, I'm playing as a woman this time around. There's no gay dudes? Not really. Mm. Mm. It's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, But no, yeah, playing through that, enjoying the gameplay. More so than anything, I think I'm enjoying just, like, the good fantasy bullshit that's in a game like this like oh shit there are there are holy weapons that are made from the bones of the dragon god you guys worshipped that can only be used by the chosen few in the in the dragon knight's bloodline I'm down for that that's some good shit that's some good lore okay Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Really well, really designed in a way where I can pick it up, put in 15 minutes and half an hour into it, like, and then put it down and then go about the rest of my day. And that's probably why I'm like 11 hours in after starting on Sunday. So, yeah, no, it's good. What are you guys checking out? Andrew, you want to kick us off? Um, like I said, I finished Metro Exodus, mm-hmm. and that was solid, like, good game. I probably should have uh, finished playing it right after I started instead of playing it and then taking a month break. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to play it at some point, you can always borrow it from me. It's one of those games where it doesn't seem to have a lot of replay value, so I would not recommend playing or paying full yeah. price. I got it on a discount, so that was fine. But yeah, if you want to you want to borrow it, let me know. But then I started playing uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Played in like the first hour and a half, two hours mm-hmm. of that. Got through the intro, which was, which was fun. It seems like it's a good game. Jade was disappointed that you're not an actual ghost. And that was why she's like interested in playing it with me. Because she thought you played as a ghost. Like an actual literal ghost instead of a metaphorical one. Damn. Did you just open the tweet Ryan sent? Yeah, yeah, I did. Damn. This guy's oh sad. Oh my god. Two likes. Uh, you want to see... Here's, here's the one that he retweeted that had a little bit more likes and I think emphasized how he felt at the moment. God, I... He, he literally sees himself as the sole defender of Final Space. This was his thing, and it was taken away at the last second by cruel gods. Holy oh shit. Oh my, wow. This dude replied <laughs> to his own tweet. Wait. Oh, he does that a lot, yeah. Damn. Scrolling through the timeline, he absolutely does that. And then, of course, somebody in the comments is, sign the petition to save Final Space. That's not how this shit works, people. I'm surprised that, like, uh, yeah, they are saying goodbye and stuff like that, and not just, like, I I guess it's the difference is that the creators said no. Because it happens a lot where, yeah, a network cancels a show and then some other random network picks them up. Like the Roku channel I, or some shit. But having... Yeah, that's, um, I'm guessing the creator being like, nah, this, is the last, this was the last season. Mm-hmm. They, 
They ended on a cliffhanger, bro. I, but no, it, it, it was very clear that people were just out of their depth in this one. The writing was not, not spectacular. You guys both liked yeah. season one, right? Yeah, no, I I really liked season one. Season two was a mixed bag, but it had enough, like, pretty good moments to, like, weather, like, you know, make it worth weathering the storm of the bad mm-hmm. moments. And I watched the first episode of season three. I'm like, nope, can't do it. And this is awful. Just it. I don't know what the rest of the season was like for you, Lucas, but... If you guys remember watching the B movie, yeah. you know, how we, we talked about how it felt kind of like you were just jumping from one moment to the mm-hmm. next, and you didn't really know where you were. Part of that was you guys being drunk, but I was stone cold sober, and watching that movie, there were plenty of moments where I honestly thought I may have blacked out for a couple of minutes, yeah. and then woken up at some other points of the movie. That's what the first episode of Final Space Season 3 felt like for me. I was just like, whoa, where the fuck am I? What is happening? This doesn't make any sense. Because it's... Uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to throw shade. And you know what? At the end of the day, the people who made this show made a TV show, which is something I haven't done. And they will always have that over me, and good for them. But that's... I think it felt like that because at the end of the day... The... These people don't know how these tropes work, why they're affecting, and, like, just... Now, yeah, we're gonna do the... the uh, yeah, the sci-fi trope of... There are different universes with this version of this character, and what does all that mean? How does that help him figure out his own identity? But, like, not understanding why that's affecting, or how stakes work, or just... Ah... Uh, I don't know. They were throwing shit at a wall and it did not stick. Yeah. Ah. But I am looking oh, forward to playing Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> Bringing it back. Um, you want to talk about the moment that you texted me? Yeah, there's, like, I don't think this is much of a spoiler um, if you guys want to play this game because it happens within, like, two minutes of it starting. Um... You start out, you play as Jin Sakai, uh, a samurai lord on the island of Tsushima. Your uncle is like the head samurai, and the Mongols are going to invade your island in their thousands. The Mongol horde is landing on the beach, and all of the samurai of Tsushima gather on the beach to defend it. And they're like, well, we die today. There's no way around that. We all know what's going to happen, but maybe we can stop the invasion. You know, you, Lord Adachi, our greatest swordsman, go down there and break their spirits. So Lord Adachi rides on his horse on the beach, walks amongst the Mongols. He's like, bring me your finest warrior. I challenge you one on one. And then like the the Mongol general walks up, this huge fucking dude. He's like, I am Lord Adachi. My ancestor is the legendary... And then he just, like, throws his drink on him. He's like, disrespectful, you have no honor. And then he just lights <laughs> on fire. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit. What the fuck? We had an image in our head of how this was going to go. That wasn't it. Man, don't you hate it Damn. when you challenge an invading army to glorious one-on-one combat and they just kill you instead? Doesn't that suck? Yeah. <laughs> what are you checking out, Ryan? Um, watch the first episode of Impeachment, American oh. Crime Story, which is the third season of uh, what was originally the O.J. Simpson one season, and then they just and then before after that they did uh, Assassination of Gianni Versace. And now they're on to the uh, Bill Clinton impeachment, how that all went down with Monica Lewinsky serving as an EP. And it's, it's first, I like the first episode. I was interested. Didn't they do yeah. one like two years ago about the 2016 election? I remember. Not I remember. Ryan Murphy at the very least. I thought I remembered 
a show called like Impeachment American Crime Story about Trump, like a syndicated show. I don't know. Hmm. But no, not not definitely not like the Ryan Murphy American Crime Story umbrella did not uh, do one on Trump. But yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. It's it was. I really enjoyed the O.J. Simpson one because O.J. Simpson and all that stuff that happened was like kind of just before mm-hmm. our time to where like we have awareness of the general like right. what happened and like, you know, we, we, we sensed all the cultural fallout from what happened, but all the specifics are just completely gone. Like we might know a one liner, like if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Or the fact that OJ did it and was acquitted, like, that might be the majority of what we know. That's kind of the same thing with, like, Bill Clinton's impeachment. Like, by and large, yeah, I know that he had an affair with his own intern, uh, lied about it on national TV, and then was impeached by a largely, like, conservative uh, Mm -hmm. impeachment force, and then you know, was acquitted because presidents don't really get removed from mm. office. And then yeah. Bush got elected. Like, yeah, it's, that's basically what I know. I know the skeleton. So now, now that we're into like, oh, and I knew Linda Tripp from the SNL sketch in which John Goodman plays Linda Tripp, which is, boy, didn't age super well. But um, yeah, it's, you know, like the basics basically. And the first episode was definitely a, all right, no, like, here we go. This is what actually happened, like, to the point of the centerpiece of the entire scandal is the EP on the show. Like, we can actually see what I just, happened. So. so, like, just for super clarity, um, Bill Clinton served a full eight terms. Like, he didn't lose eight, eight years. That full eight, 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 two, full terms. two terms, full eight years, sorry. Like, he didn't lose any election because of this, and that's a part of what makes this... No, that's what I said. Well, right? oh, yeah. sorry, from the way you worded it, there was a way to read it into it where it's like, yeah, he was impeached but didn't get removed, and then Bill, uh, and then George Bush was elected, like not unrelated. Like well, George because, Bush no. maybe would have, yeah. It's in that it was pretty, like, somewhat yeah, concurrent. Yeah, yeah. Like it mm-hmm. was, it kind of made him a lame duck at the yeah. end of his term. Like he was pretty toxic. Like then a large reason why. Al Gore didn't win the election, even though he did win the popular vote, like was because of his association with right. Bill Clinton. But yeah, that was yeah, I yeah. guess what I was gotcha. trying to get at with that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's an interesting chapter in American history where, look, a president did a bad. And that president was also just by all accounts, by modern definitions, a fucking sleazeball. <laughs> like, <laughs> just 100%. Would have been canceled years and years ago if he mm-hmm. did what he did in modern times. Like, yeah, but um, it's in- it's interesting to to see with the current how how much Donald Trump gets has has done, and it's like, boy, oh, he only he only had a relationship with one person who, you know, like he was in a position it's- of power over. And then had other accusers of sexual harassment. Th- and this stuff is like your that. guy, neoliberals. Yeah. This is this is the policy you want every Democratic nominee to to follow through on forever. Oh man, Lucas learned the world and learned the word neoliberal <laughs> league. Fuck. He's listening. He's been listening to fucking Hassan Piker's yeah, podcast. Like I didn't want to. I didn't want to call you out before, I, but you called yourself a socialist like two weeks ago, and I remember you fighting me pretty hard on that a while back. <laughs> I can be a socialist he's, and not like Bernie Sanders' our li- brand of socialism. Our little boy is sprouting wings. Wait, whose brand of socialism do you like then? He's not left enough for you. You want like actual like Leninist <laughs> shit, like. <laughs> I don't know. I it. God, this... Lucas is an anarcho-communist. <laughs> it, it it it's it's similar to me of like one of our friends' position where he's like, I don't like Bernie. I do like AOC, and it's like AOC is just a younger female Bernie. Like they have yeah. identical policy I, positions. 
You just like, like her because she's hotter than Bernie. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not going to put that on anyone. I am just saying <laughs> it is likely then that you have bought into propaganda about Bernie Sanders if you appreciate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's positions like because they are just identical and AOC will go on record saying that she supports Bernie Sanders on 99.9% of policy Uh issues like but yeah Yeah. I don't know man it's uh our our little boy's growing up he's listening to socialist podcasts and realizing that it's all a fucking scam great I... but yeah i mean it's it's simple the 90s were a boom time I... like mm-hmm. white mainstream america was very successful yeah. in the 90s so so enter that is white absolutely... mainstream democrat bill clinton being associated yeah. with all that and he's pretty being well like guy yeah but becomes the, the the figurehead and now even though there's the the sexual harassment and, and you know affair scandal that it's associated with him a lot of people are willing to overlook that because they can just say man remember how good the late 80s and most of the 90s were for you john erickson of idaho things were pretty fucking good weren't they vote for us man we did- <laughs> No, repeatedly, when Democrats are offered the chance to awaken the sleeping giant that is underrepresented Mm -hmm. voters and appealing to racist centrists who are too dumb to understand that they need to, like, have a position on policy and they just want to vote for whoever they're quote unquote inspired by, they choose the racists every single time. Like, that is my main gripe with the party. Like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it, it, it tracks. It makes sense. Yeah. So, what can you do? But it's fun. I'm in, I'm into the first episode. It it gave me a lot to think about, and I imagine for a lot of people, it'll just be a rehashing of stuff they all knew about because they lived through the scandal. But you know, for me, it's like ooh, the nitty gritty. Like, wait, what? How did Monica Lewinsky meet Linda Tripp? How did Wait, like, who who is, uh, oh my god, see, that's terrible, I forgot her name, the original woman who appeared at CPAC and, like, accused Bill Clinton of sexual harassment and, like, kicked off the entire lawsuit that ended up basically taking down and exposing the affair. God damn it. Mm. Okay, anyway. Lauren something? Yeah, see. I'm no, no, person. you're fine, and you're going to have plenty of time to research that as we move into a quick intermission and join a different... Different Google Meet call. Mm. You beat Andrew. Hell yeah. Uh, it was Paula Jones, by the way. It wasn't Lauren. Cool. Yeah. All right. I think it's time. Jordan Love looked really great in the fourth quarter of that Packers game. <laughs> he only played one possession against the starters, and he didn't really go anywhere. He stepped it up when the backups came in. That's some technically impressive football, though. Like that, a mechanical quarterback, you could say. Good fundamentals. Yeah. yeah. Corey Bajorquez but looked pretty cool too. Bajorquez, you know. Bajorquez. You don't have to add an <laughs> extra oopla. <in> <laughs> I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck. He I mean, he, he boomed a couple bad boys. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Our punter may have been the best best part of that mm. game. Bad punting, it seems to be... Well, I don't want to say anything and then jinx it and be cursed with yeah. another 10 years of bad punting. But Crosby did all he was asked to yeah, do. Yeah, he kicked a field goal. <laughs> he booted both of his kicks for touchbacks and kicked a field goal. <laughs> like, that's... 
That's all you can ask for. He did a he perfect put down job. His copy of War and Peace went out onto the field, kicked a field goal, and then picked it back up on page 112. You know. Don't forget about kicking touchbacks uh, on the kickoff. No, uh, that's <laughs> he right. He did that too. Literally can't uh, ask for anything more. He had a perfect game from kicker standards. <laughs> Granted, he only had to kick kick off twice, once at the beginning of the game and once after our lone score, but I ne- I don't know about you. No, he didn't he didn't have to kick off after our score. Time expired. Oh, nothing happened after no. Mason Crosby kicked the field goal. A hurricane. Oh. Oh, I shouldn't say hurricane. Shit. <laughs> a meteor hit the field and canceled the rest of the game. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I never thought we would start our season off like this. <laughs> feels weird. Feels bad. It was shocking. It's football. Like I, that's what I was saying to Andrew. Like once once we failed on the fourth and two from our own twenty, anything that happened after that was literally just pointless. Like it. it when a blowout becomes a true blowout, it's like a rout, you know? It's like in war where, yeah, you do, if it's an army of 80,000 versus an army of 100,000, you don't have to kill 80,000 people. You have to kill 20,000 before the rest are like, fuck all this. Like, it's it's a rout, you know? Once, once things get bad enough, people decide to stop. Like, so... The score being as high and out of hand as it was is somewhat irrelevant. If one thing breaks our way in the opposite direction, who knows what happens, basically. So, you know. Mm. It's interesting. It was an interesting game. We're, oh. we're not ready. We gotta, no. we gotta tune up. We're, we're sorely missing David Bakhtiari. Yeah. I think we... Still had the Bakhtiari playbook, and two turns out having two rookie O linemen <laughs> does not give your quarterback sufficient time to make, make the correct plays. Yeah, and also Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers looked like he was trying to make stuff out of nothing, but then he also did not play right. well. It wasn't just that Aaron Rodgers was getting rushed all over the field and the receivers were always covered. Aaron Rodgers did not play well. He he made some fucking mistakes. I was going to say, like, what, what was he trying to make out of those two interceptions? Yeah, exactly. He should have just tossed it out of bounds or run out of bounds, but instead he tried to, like, throw it, it was while getting down. sacked. And, yeah. the, the second pick was third yeah. down. If you fucking throw it away on third down, you are... You are I'm human talking, scum, talking, and you can't convince me otherwise. Well, no, that's the thing. The first interception was Aaron Rodgers making a fucking mistake. Like, he made the wrong decision there. And the, second, and the second interception, oh, no. that was just a terrible throw. It was a bad throw, but the decision was fine. And on the first one, he was literally hit as he was, as he was throwing from his blind side. Like, I don't know, man. Not a great throw, for sure put it in the wrong spot but like definitely under heavy pressure no i'm saying he shouldn't have he thrown was it most of the game i'm saying he shouldn't have thrown it there and he tried to make something there the guy was there to 100 percent. the receiver was there that was a touchdown if he has not hit easy touchdown walk in Devonte adams walks untouched into the end zone just thrown literally three yards behind him like directly to the defender who is desperately trying to catch up so yeah, bad. 100%. Not a not an ideal play from Aaron Rodgers. And the second one, objectively bad throw. Like, just missed his target by a country mile. The fastest guy on our team. So, I don't know, man. We, we, we got off script quickly. Our defense allowed some really, really long drives to the point where we really only had two bona fide possessions in the first half until we had one last minute drive, which actually was the only thing that produced points. Uh, yeah, All right. it was weird. Defense, bad. Offensive line, bad. Special teams could be the difference maker. Did, not, a, not a factor. Like Fine. Passable. Not, nothing really happened. Yeah. Uh, our punt coverage was still not great. Still let up some pretty big returns after some of those big punts from missed tackles. 
I mean, we, we'll still probably beat the Bears this season. We're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. Like, no, it, if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, the Green Bay Packers are guaranteed to make this, the playoffs. This was a terrible With seven game. seven seeds? Yeah. Absolutely. We've had, we've had awful-ass games the past couple of years. It happens. We've, we've made the playoffs. It, panic time is not now. This was week one after none of the starters played all preseason, and Aaron Rodgers decided to not show up until training camp actually started. So, And Florida, which Aaron yeah. Rodgers plays terribly in Florida for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that's a rule. Florida and California, usually no good. I He crosses the 35th parallel and it all just falls to shit. Uh, not <laughs> Dallas. He fucking owns Dallas. Yeah. That shit's pretty far south. <laughs> yeah, it's not the heat. I don't know what the fuck it is. Dallas yeah. is a dome. I, it might be a. It might. Is be Dallas heat, a dome? Honestly, yeah, the Jerry Dome, man. Oh, you're right. Shit. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, he he plays great in domes as a rule. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was uh, it was an ugly game. No team is perfect. We had an equally ugly game against Tampa last year in the regular season and we were the best team in the mm. nfc last year so i can't wait for us to play the uh the saints in the nfc championship and then still get fucking destroyed because we got blown out by the 49ers in 2019 in the regular season played them again in the nfc championship game and we never adjusted we got blown out by tampa bay last year and then played them in the nfc championship game didn't adjust, got blown out. We did not get blown out. That was a close game. It was... I feel like it was never really as close as it seemed. We had the ball with one possession. We were down by one possession. No, I know, but ball. it never felt close like, to it's me. The entire game... Yeah, because felt... Aaron Rodgers had three straight three and outs. Like, we had multiple interceptions of Tom Brady to put us in, like, great position to tie up the game and kept not doing it. Like, yeah, I agree we probably weren't going to win the game the way that it panned out, but, like, we we, we, we were better. That, that fucking regular season game was garbage. And the year before that, the Niners were just better than us. Like, they were just a more talented team. We could not match up against them. So, yeah, obviously, like, Mike McCarthy is... Or no, that was LaFleur, you're mm-hmm. right, never mind. Um, obviously, we didn't make enough adjustments, but... I don't know that we could have. We were just outclassed. Um, we'll see. We will fucking see. Tampa returned all 22 mm. starters. And the 49ers and are healthy. The, and they almost blew it. <laughs> Me and, We were watching that game. Like, holy shit, man. Lions had the ball on the what? Like the, the Niners 25 down eight. Like they, they had a legit shot. To tie up the game and send it to OT. The Niners were up 38 to 10. Like, the Niners were up by 28 points. And the Lions were just one random play from, like, having a chance to tie it up. It was, uh, it was pretty fucking great. So Things are knows, happening! Man. Yeah. All right, I think this is going to be a short one. I think we're running out of gas a little early, but that's what happens when we are in the doggiest of the dog days of summer and the Packers lose. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Check us out on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for highlight clips. Act blue link in the description down below if you want to help a collection of great progressive causes. Also, you can support us on Patreon and join the likes of the terrific Tiffany Cole, Sucky Badger, and Sensual Richard Nixon. Email us your questions and business opportunities, voluntary viewing at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter v2, at v2 underscore podcast. And follow me on Twitter at Lucas DeRider to keep up with all of my writing. Brand new week ahead of us, everyone. Good luck getting through it. <laughs>